Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting. <laughs> Finally, I can say welcome to Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem for the Nintendo GameCube. It's been requested over and over and over again throughout the years, but now I think I'm finally in a position where I can say this recording's going to be okay and I can play through the game. Which is great, because I haven't played this game in about half a decade, really. Maybe five, six, yeah, seven years, maybe. Far too long, really. Far too long. I have to admit... I am kind of cheating, I'm not actually playing it on the GameCube, I don't have a capture card or anything, I'm emulating it, and I'm not holding a GameCube controller, I'm holding a Telerol controller, Mad Cat's FPS Pro, wouldn't recommend it. It has light up analog sticks, but that's just to hide the fact that it's a barely functional controller, really. So yeah, we're going to start a game here, with the uh, fictional memory card in slot A. If you're familiar with this, you know what kind of a treat you're in for. If you're not, Flesh. I kind of envy you. Bone. Bound together with the oddest magical incantation. This wretched book is where it all began so long ago. Before time. Before humanity. I am Dr. Edward Roivas. I am a clinical psychologist. I am also dead. This is not my story, nor even the story of the Roivas family. It is the story of humanity. Like it or not, Believe it or not, as you will. Your perceptions will not change reality, but simply color it. Humanity has been on the edge of extinction for two millennia. Ignorant of so much, and dependent on so few. The Guardians grow restless. Their time once again near. Whether by fate or misfortune, my family has crossed their path, and they didn't take kindly to it. Their attention turns to my granddaughter, for she is the last of my line, and the last hope for humanity. Okay, that's a little bit strange. I think that's meant to be fading from black to the game, but for some reason it's green. Hopefully that's the only issue I run into emulating this. So far it's been pretty good. And here's where I test if the controls have been mapped out correctly. Okay, right. So I've got to kill these undead fellows. Shooting them in the head usually does the trick. Oh, oh, there we go. Um, I don't even know if I need to kill all these guys. I might need to die myself. You'll see what I mean. I actually remember this game like the back of my hand in some ways. Just, uh... Oh dear, yep, run out of ammo. Okay, um... Do I, do I need to die? No. I do, I do. Oh, this is so cool. It's going to be one big nostalgia rush for me, honestly.
Hello. Miss Alexandra Roivas? Um, yeah, who's this? This is Inspector Legrasse of the Rhode Island Police. I'm sorry to disturb you, but there's been an accident with your grandfather. I'll be on the next flight out. Ah, Miss Roybus, I'm pleased to meet you. I trust you had a pleasant trip? Um, yes, I suppose so, considering. Yes, my condolences. This is most unpleasant. It's a shame we couldn't meet under brighter circumstances. Yes, it is. Can we get this over with, please? Of course. Uh, this way. But I must warn you, it's not a pleasant sight. I'm afraid there's not much to see. Miss Roivas, is that your grandfather, Edward? Yes, it's him. He's wearing our family ring. I don't understand. Why are you showing me this? Can't you check dental records or something? What is wrong with you? I'm... I'm sorry. It's my job, lady. You're the only living relative, and no, we can't check dental records. There's no head. No, none of this makes sense. There's no sign of intrusion, and there was certainly a lot of force used here. I have never seen anything like this in my 20 years on the force. We have no evidence except for the body, and what's left doesn't say much. Ugh, we don't have a single clue. Well, you better find out who did this. I'm not leaving Rhode Island until you do. There must be some clue in this old mansion revealing what happened. I want answers. So do I. I wish I had some. Well, you heard the woman. She wants answers, and that's what we're going to try and give her. Shocked by her grandfather's mysterious death and frustrated at the incompetence of the local police, Alex vows to uncover the truth. She decides to search the mansion. The place where Edward conducted his research. If there was a tie to his past, and possibly a tie to his murderer, it would be here. Okay, and now we're in the game, not a dream, the actual game. Okay, so, um, obviously I have played this game before, so I kind of know what to do now. Uh, I think really you're meant to sort of like, just search through the mansion, meander, wander around, and eventually you'll stumble onto something, but I know what to do, so... I can't really feign ignorance in this, I'm going to have to have a look at this clock. Let's examine in detail. A beautiful carriage clock. The hands appear to be stuck, yet the clock continues to tick, with the time permanently set to 3.33. There is a key in the back of the clock, presumably for winding it. Should I look at the key? Absolutely. Okay, it's not for winding it at all. It looks like a dresser key, so I, yes, I pick it up. I found the dresser key, which is for some reason in a clock. A little bit weird. So, uh, no, I don't want to punch the air. I'm just sort of like Looking at the controls right now. No. Is there a uh, inventory screen? Oh, it's in the start menu, of course. Right, okay, so I can use, I can equip, and I can also check things. As well as switch back and forth between sections. Okay, so I've got a dresser key, which I just picked up, and a uh, a second floor key as well. Fine. Um, let's, let's check on the dresser key. Does it give me <laughs> any indication of which dresser it could be? No, key to a chest of drawers or a dresser. It could be a chest of drawers. Okay, fine. And the second floor key, I actually don't remember that. Does that mean that the second floor is locked? I guess, let's, uh, let's go check. So, this will be the second floor. I think this is the only door up here. Is it, is it locked? It is. Well, hopefully not for too much longer. There we go. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> the key comes apart in the lock. The key to the second floor is broken. Perhaps there's a way of repairing it. I think there is, but I don't believe I have the means right now. But I picked up the broken second floor key, and we'll have a look at that later on. Okay, so we're not going into the second floor right now. I don't think I need to, honestly. Right, so yeah, you can search throughout, you know, the, the ground floor all you want, but I think what we need to do is either go... 
to the left or right room? I'm going to side with right. I'm just going on memory here, really. That's a good sign. The door's open. Yeah, this is where I need to be. You know what I've got to say? I know the emulator's doing like half the work, but this actually looks really, really good. I think it looked quite good on the GameCube as well, but I mean, it, it feels good. It looks good. I'm kind of surprised. I have really, really thick nostalgia goggles for this game, and uh, I'm not... I'm not disappointed yet. <laughs> okay, I'll just have a look at the desk over there. I can't actually have a look in any greater detail than that. Um, is that over here? I think. Yeah, examine. A slight draft can be felt issuing from beneath the bookshelf. Almost as though a vent or empty space uh, is behind it. Right you are, Alex. Right you are. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at this clock. <laughs> I'm very sorry, I am I am kind of skipping ahead, but I, I, as I said, I can't feign ignorance. This looming grandfather clock seems to stand ominously in the corner, gazing on this empty room with an almost patriarchal air. And I can adjust, adjust the clock hands, which I will do, and I'm going to move them to, you probably guessed it, 3.33. So about there somewhere, there we go. And that's why there was a draft. It's a secret door. To a secret corridor, to a secret room. <laughs> it probably took me like near an hour to get to this bit, first time I played this game. There's no real clues to get here either. It's my grandfather's secret study. And I'm going to have a look at that big object on the desk. It's a large leather bound antique book resting upon the cluttered desk. Should Alex read the book? No. Absolutely not. But will she? I'm afraid so. <laughs> That's quite a read, isn't it? I had no knowledge of what was to come. Nor did I care. How the knowledge changed me, it will also change you. As you read this, you will come to learn fear as I have. You too will come to understand, or you will perish. To think that once I could not see beyond the veil of our reality. To see those who dwell behind. My life now has purpose, for I have learned the frailty of flesh and bone. I was once a fool. <laughs> well, I mean, aside from the green fade-ins, everything seems to be working fine. This should be good. Where is Quies Candemast? Where is Conservandi? Facusatis aquae sumat, et animus eorum conferma. Pupna huis, diacit modo prima multarum. Si ingeptum conficiamus. Quam primum, Centurio Augustus. Wolo res I would like to compliment you once more on your battle tactics. Our enemies did not have a chance. Do you believe that it really exists, Centurion? I do not doubt our Emperor's beliefs, or his orders. But if we are to retrieve the artifact, then we must be strong and patient. Don't do it, man. Don't know. Step away from the pillars. You know, this game introduced me to a lot of things, and one of them was Lovecraft. Indirectly. He's a big inspiration for this game, which is half the reason I like it. Ugh. 
Wow, I'm actually genuinely surprised. This game has held up well. Okay, so yeah, if you're not familiar with this game, uh, one of the many draws of it is that you can play through uh, many different lives, many different characters, many different settings, many different periods in time as well. So we're playing as this Centurion. Let's have a look at this. The die on the floor is finely crafted, inlaid with gold and gems that Pius can't identify. A strong linear design is situated in the middle and is equally unknown to the Roman soldier. Everything down here is going to be unknown, unknown to him. He's, he's dealing with things beyond his comprehension, really. Right. Uh, I believe we're going to have to go down this ladder. Yeah, let's go. Come on, Pius. you got to do it, man. I'm sorry. Danger lurks beneath it. Pius' courageous resolve does not buckle. Do it. <laughs> it's crazy. All I have to see is like one frame of the room and I remember everything about it. It's great. Well, it's kind of good and bad. It doesn't take long for the dead to rise. <laughs> He's not as shocked as I would be. Although, to be honest, he has just entered a labyrinth via teleporting. So, maybe he's just going to run with it. Right, okay, so... Um, you hold the right trigger and you can actually like select different body parts of this undead creature to kill. So... Oh, bloody hell, there's a few more. So, generally, what I like to do is go for the head and then the arms. Because they don't actually go down when you knock their head off. And they actually keep swinging, so if you remove the arms, they have nothing to, you know, like, swing with, so... There you go. Oh, and then you can, like, finish them off. I don't actually think you need to finish them off, either. I think they just sort of, like, wriggle down on the floor, but... Let's just get rid of them. There we go. Okay, now let's check out that block over there. What is it? It's a strange granite block lying on the floor. Am I going to pick it up? Absolutely. It's got some sort of red symbol on it. Strange, but there we go. Okay, let's move on. It's a bit of a slow start, honestly. If you're not familiar with it, it is a slow start. But stick with it. Trust me on that one. It is going to be worth it. This area is more or less a tutorial, so you, you kind of get you kind of get introduced to the weaker enemies and how to how to do combat and stuff like that. So to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if I don't get hit at all. Just sort of going through the motions right now. I mean, I must have. I must have played and completed this game, oh, three times at least. Right, you can see on this pedestal in the front, or in the middle rather, there is another block with a green symbol this time. And again, I'm going to pick it up, because I just like to do that. I have very deep pockets, apparently. And uh, yet again, we're going to move on. Okay. Accosted by the undead already. I'll just take care of all their heads straight away. Any more? Yep, there we go. Right, examine. There we go. It's another granite block, which I'm going to take. This time with some sort of blue symbol on it. Okay. <laughs> yep, you just stand there. Uh, any more? No, I think it's just those five. And there's not a door there. So, yeah, while you're standing there swinging at nothing, I'm going to be going down. Yeah, <laughs> you don't even have to deal with the enemies. I like it. I don't know if there's camera controls in this, or you have to take the sort of cinematic view all the time. I don't think there's like a first person or anything. Okay. Is it left? Nope, that's blocked off. I guess it must be to the right then. And yeah, it's probably not a good thing that they're whispering my name. Go on. Go on, Pius, you can do it. Right, okay. So there are those symbols again. And there's something we haven't actually seen, really. That was on the that was on the floor of the uh, the teleport thing, teleport platform. So you know, like always, the heads come off. Oh, oh yeah, this control. I might I actually might be going back to. <laughs> he killed him. He actually might. I'm actually might be going back to uh, mouse and keyboard to be honest, because this control is not very good. The A button keeps holding itself in as well. It's horrible. Right. Okay. A fourth and I think final block to pick up. With the purple symbol on it. Now I'll give you ten guesses what I need to do with these. As you can see on the wall, back here, there are little slots for them. So, let's examine. This wall is prominently decorated with a strange line symbol carved into the granite. 
Cut into the wall is a square hole lined with scratches as though something has been removed from it. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. So let's go into the inventory and select the purple granite block. And that slides right in. And lights right up. Yeah, he has no idea what he's getting into, this man. But he's, he's managing to solve this rather well, I suppose. So, green granite block in this one. Again, lights up. I suppose the man isn't really familiar with electricity or anything like that, so uh, he has no comprehension of what's going on here. The red block goes in here. That is, if it is indeed electricity. I don't think it is, actually. <laughs> we'll probably be finding that out later on in the game. And finally, the blue block goes in here. And then something happens. I can remember a lot of this game, but I can't remember absolutely everything. Ah, I see, right, so that, yeah, that comes down, so I can go through now. Brilliant! I'll leave you guys to it. Hopefully they end up killing each other at some point. And off we go. This way. <laughs> and we come face to face with a statue of me. Which is a little bit strange. Pius, you must prove your worth by destroying this statue. Oh. Oh, right, yeah, this is... a. Uh, uh, a basic combat tutorial. And it's basically what I've been doing right now, so I just have to hit the head, hit the arms, and the torso, and we're done. Easy peasy. Simple as that. You know, I kind of wish this was a blind playthrough. I do really envy the people that have no idea what's going to come up, because you're going to be so surprised. It's going to be such a treat for you. Oh dear. <laughs> Don't always lock on. There we go. Right. Now you just sort of wander around over there. I'll deal with uh, a bit of a puzzle, I think. Right, I think it's probably something to do with this that's all lit up in the corner. It is a button attached to a small pylon softly illuminating the room. A bizarre energy seems to radiate from it. I love bizarre energy. Will I push the button? Absolutely. Every time I'm, <laughs> Every time I'm saying yes, I should be saying no, really. But uh, let's see how deep the rabbit hole goes, shall we? Two teleports in one day. Not bad for your average Roman centurion. Now, what happens here? There's three things. Red, blue, and green. What shall I go for? Does it matter? I don't even know. Let's go for the blue one in the middle. Shaped like a delicate dome, a pale blue statuette floats gracefully above the pedestal. Should Pius claim this artifact? Again, like Alex reading the book? No, absolutely not. But I don't think I have a choice. Sorry, mate. Poor wretched soul. Eons have passed since then, and I have learned much. All at once, I understood. The forces of the multiverse all made sense under the transcending power of Ulyoth. No mountain too high. No city too far. Face me, and you shall surely perish. Quite intimidating there. Alex has acquired the Tome of Eternal Darkness. And guys, I'm afraid this is where we're going to leave the video. I don't know how the recording is going to come out. Hopefully it's okay. I guess if you're seeing this, it's great. Um, you know, like the video, comment on the video if you want to see more. I would love to do a part two, three, four, five, who knows. Hopefully, see you in part two. It is the story of humanity. Me, Alex. I do, I do. Should Alex read the book? No. Absolutely not. But will she? I'm afraid so. <laughs> it's crazy. All I have to see is like one frame of the room and I remember everything about it. It's great.
well, it's kind of good and bad. <laughs>